Hello, and I am delighted to welcome Suzanne Penwood and Sarah Carruthers, who are jointly presenting at the NLP conference next May. And your topic is really, really interesting. Um, it's the neuroscience of breathing for coaches. So perhaps you would start, um, both of you, I'll let you tag team in as, as required, but perhaps you'd like to start by saying a little bit more about yourselves and about your presentation. Shall I jump in? So I'm Suzanne, as opposed to Sarah. Sarah's the attractive one. <laughs> and uh, I'm an NLP trainer and an NBIT master trainer. And I've been fascinated with um, breathing and neuroscience, anatomy and physiology for a long, long while. I come out of a health background, spent 10 years as an associate professor in health, um, and these days work as a neuroscience uh, based coaching counsellor is what I call myself these days and work largely in the field of stress and anxiety. So um, I'm Suzanne's business partner. We run a business together called the Luminosity Project, which helps people bring the best of yeah, who they are to everything they do, kind of that journey towards radical wholeness. Um, my kind of background, yeah, similarly trained as a kind of coach in multiple modalities from NLP kind of trainers to MBIT to map of meaning, um, hypnosis, um, havening, um, IDT, kind of all sorts of stuff. And I guess both of us have a fascination or kind of excitement around what works, what is really going to kind of shift the dial in terms of our, of our clients. And for both of us, um, we did a lovely um, polyvagal um, course kind of last year and for both of us having kind of following that but also other training has kind of left us both believing that kind of state is the most important thing that if somebody is not in the right state there is no point in having a yeah kind of head-based conversation with them and trying to do any kind of fancy NLP or kind of whatever type of coaching moves and the fastest way to shift your state is through your breathing so us as coaches wanting to kind of support other coaches to yeah to understand what do they need to know about breathing how does it work at a kind of neurophysiological level as well as you know how might I use it within a session to support my client to be the best possible version of them wonderful wonderful so it sounds really interesting so what are delegates going to take away from your session we want them to take away a toolbox so we're going to share some of our favorite breathing techniques that are all research underpinned and accurate because there's a lot of inaccuracies being taught about breathing. The number of people who say, oh, you need to relax, take a deep breath. It's like the absolute opposite of what you need to do if you want to relax. So, yeah, we're going to make sure that it's accurate, up-to-date, innovative, and full of practical techniques that they can take away and use for themselves and for clients immediately. That, that's the plan is they walk away with an active toolbox. Yeah, and I guess underpinned behind that as well is the kind of the anatomy, the physiology, the neurology related to breathing. So understanding enough about the science to then kind of go, well, actually, why would this work? And why might I choose to use this technique with this client versus this one with this client? Again, kind of map back to what state are they in? Where are they wanting to get to? And therefore, what's the fastest, most efficient, most gentle way to be able to take them, yeah, to be able to take them there? Brilliant, that's a toolbox I would certainly enjoy. <laughs> It's not something that used to be taught as part of coaching. I don't know. Mm -hmm. well, how benefit to um to individuals because I mean I don't obviously do any coaching. However, it's you know like you say with state management, everything starts with self, doesn't it? So um... absolutely. But now it's almost like um, if you haven't got that, there's something missing. Right. So whether it is for coaching, whether it's for self-use, whether it's for helping someone in a workplace who's in the middle of a stress response or trying to get into flow to, you know, hit a deadline. Yes. Um, breathing is just essential to all of it. So we're hoping to get people as enthusiastic about it as we are and understanding how important it is. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. 
I guess the other piece kind of related to that is us as coaches, I don't know if you're like me, but often you have kind of back-to-back -back sessions <laughs> where, you know, you've got one day where you've got, you know, four or five people fitted into a day and another day, which is kind of much more kind of sparsely kind of populated. What? How do you get yourself into the right space for each client because often I mean if, if you're like us there's kind of quite a lot of trauma quite a lot of you know kind of high amplitude states that have gone on with a particular client so how do you make that shift so that you are present you are connected you are ventral vagal to use a polyvagal term in terms of you know kind of a really safe space for that client um, that is coming in afresh with whatever problem, with whatever challenge, with whatever opportunity. So how do I, first of all, manage myself and get myself into a space that is going to be really useful and supportive and safe for this person coming in? And then how might I use those skills to, yeah, to help them to? Sounds like a fantastic toolbox that everybody needs to have. <laughs> well, we think so, but we might be biased. <laughs> Well, breathing is kind of essential, isn't it, really? So um, so breathing the right way would be really useful to know. Yeah, and 90% of us, according to the literature, are breathing suboptimally, 90%. So we're also, for people who are, you know, a little bit competitive and, and want to know, am I in that 10% or the 90%, we're going to give them that answer as well. We're going to show them how to do that test to get that answer. So Perfect. So is there anything that delegates can do before your session in order to um, prepare them and, and ensure that they get a deeper and the best um, experience during your session? Yeah, I would go for awareness. Like prior to, just pay more conscious attention to your own breathing. Mm. Get curious about it. Is it, mm. you know, really shallow, really high, really fast? Do you ever stop and literally pay close attention to it by using some form of daily mindfulness, be it visual or auditory? Um, so yeah, if, if they could do that prior to coming on the call and already having that awareness of their own breath and maybe how they might be holding some tension, then I think they'll get way more out of the session because they'll be that step further on. And even listening to others, you know kind of as they're breathing you know you take some of the masters like Milton Erickson who naturally spoke on the out breath so yes. as you know somebody was moving into a hypnotic state he would choose to use breath whether consciously or unconsciously as a tool to help support people going deeper deeper into that beautiful trance place so just being aware just listening to what are your clients doing how are they holding themselves in their own trances and often breathing is a is an aspect of that. And as you're watching other sessions, just noticing, just being aware of, you know, somebody chest breathing. <gasps> is it kind of up here or is it kind of down in the belly? Are they centered? Are they grounded? Are you seeing shoulders moving? You know, kind of all those sorts of things. Just becoming, as Suzanne says, aware of, of breath. Mm. Very, very potent. But I suddenly realized I was holding my breath while she was saying. <laughs> Oh, and so, so many people do don't they and it's interesting yeah. that you do that because there was this beautiful paper out last week that was talking about how the gestures we use literally change the muscles and the intercostal mm -hmm. muscles that change the voice so not only be aware of the breath but listen to what happens to the voice as you change gestures start to get really intricately aware with your own body we, we've learned about uh, about different types of breathing for singing and getting the singing voice coming from different places. Yeah, so um, it's so significant. I was, another one I was going to say, I just have to get my phone out of my pocket, is I don't know if you've seen kind of people with kind of text neck where they kind of lean forward to look at their screen and their, um, you know, whether the computer or the phone, that massively affects our breathing. So you think about the generation who are kind of looking at their phone all of the time, and I would, probably include myself in that not as much as kind of a kind of younger generation but actually how that shifts and changes who we are as our, as individuals because we are in a particular state most of the time because we're not breathing optimally yeah. I just <laughs> 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 I'm very conscious of all of this all of a sudden yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you. It sounds like there's there's a huge amount to um to pack into this session. I'm really excited. We've got five hours. We're writing that, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure time will stretch to um to to appear like it is so. Um, so I mean, just finally, I mean, you know, it, this is an exciting partnership from the conference's perspective because Suzanne, you know, you're familiar with the conference. You've been a presenter before. Um, you were heavily involved in the research conference, and Sarah, you're a new presenter for the, for the oh, yeah. Which is which is a beautiful partnership for us from our perspective. Um, so I, mean, I suspect your answers may be quite different to this question. Uh, what does the NLP International Conference mean to you? Do you want to go first, Eric? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I've I've been kind of watching from a distance. Um, at, you know, kind of the 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 creations that you guys have done and. Yeah, kind of love what you do. We we have a kind of very different structure here in New Zealand, um, and I've been a member of you guys. Yeah, kind of for years, kind of often, yeah, off and on, and through Suzanne have yeah, kind of obviously kind of heard of and read and seen kind of many amazing amazing things. So you know, I am British <laughs> originally. I've been out here kind of what, thirteen years. So for me, um, you know, kind of really, yeah, that is kind of where my yeah kind of roots are from so yeah this kind of feels quite exciting to be part of such a bright interesting innovative practical you know kind of bunch of people so it's a yeah it feels like a real honor for me that I'm kind of riding on Suzanne's coattails um yeah to come into this so thank you well I've been, I've been reeling her in for a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah and for me you know I, I you're going to think I'm just kind of boosting your ego now, but you know I love what you do. Um, the fact that you bring people together from so many different NLP backgrounds, rather than mm. only representing one viewpoint or one, you know, standing, the fact that you push the professional nature of NLP is why I love ANLP. So when you do a conference, and of course I've been involved for many years and involved in the research conference, so I've got kind of um my heart and soul in it but every year and I haven't quite got through all the talks from last year yet I'm watching <laughs> the clock going I've got a few more weeks yes. um the absolute privilege of listening to people I would never get a chance to talk to or to listen or learn from either because they're big names that I just couldn't afford to go and you know train with or because they're completely unknown to me and I wouldn't even have known to look them up. And I just love watching back all those presentations after the conference. So whether I was presenting or not, I would be on board and involved in it. Um, presenting for me, because it's what I do, I come alive when I'm on stage, when I'm you know, teaching, then it makes absolute sense for me to do that. And I believe we have something to offer, which is, unique and synergistic um we've just written a book on breathing and coaching that we are hopeful will be completely formatted and ready to present along with this presentation um so yeah for me what does it mean to me it keeps me involved in the global community it keeps me up to date with my nlp thinking and learning in a really reasonable way financially which just wouldn't be possible and I'm so delighted it stayed partly virtual this year, so I can still be part of it. Um, so I think I said this last year as well, keep it partly virtual, please. <laughs> our plan is to do the same in 2024. I think our challenge is when we keep shifting the sands, it's sort of, you know, it's, we, we did three years of a real in-person conference and then two years of the virtual conference. And then it's, let's just go for gold and try this hybrid model. And, and we have to work a few years ahead. I mean, a, 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 an annual conference takes around 15 months to organize um so it's sort of we're already you know we've already got our dates for 2024 and um and we're going to do the same thing um so okay. fingers crossed it works next year oh uh, it will work because you know you guys just do such an amazing job um and so yeah what does it mean to us it means a huge amount to us um but not just to us to us as the wider community of nlp it's like massive massive thank you so, so for those of you who are watching this and, and certainly have um, 
your curiosity aroused by this particular session. Um, Suzanne and Sarah, because they're based in New Zealand, um, Suzanne and Sarah are uh, presenting virtually on Sunday the 21st of May and because you're in New Zealand you've got one of our earlier slots. Um, your, Thank you. <laughs> your slot is at 9am um, uh, British summer time it will be then uh, for 90 minutes so we're going to cram five hours into 90 minutes and um, and it will be absolutely amazing, I'm sure. So thank you both so much for your time today and really looking forward to your session next year. Thanks, Karen. Awesome. The lovely thing about being first up as well is then it kind of sets that state for the rest of the day. And it's something that, um, yeah, will be kind of useful in all sessions moving forward. So, yeah, we are stoked, as the Kiwis would say, to, um, yeah, to be up first. So. One, thank you.